Naya Sanskrit, Naya Naya Ya, literally means rules, method, or judgment. It is also the name of one of the six orthodox schools of Hinduism. This school's most significant contributions to Indian philosophy was systematic development of the theory of logic, methodology, and its treatises on epistemology. Naya school's epistemology accepts four out of six pramanas as reliable means of gaining knowledge: prachaksa (perception), anumana (inference), upamana (comparison and analogy), and sabda (word, testimony of past or present reliable experts). In its metaphysics, Naya school is closer to Vaisheshika school of Hinduism than others. It holds that human suffering results from mistakes, defects produced by activity under wrong knowledge notions and ignorance. Moksha liberation, it states, is gained through right knowledge. This premise led Naya to concern itself with epistemology, that is the reliable means to gain correct knowledge and to remove wrong notions. False knowledge is not merely ignorance to Nayayayikas, it includes delusion. Correct knowledge is discovering and overcoming one's delusions, and understanding true nature of soul, self and reality. Nayayika scholars approached philosophy as a form of direct realism, stating that anything that really exists is in principle humanly knowable. To them, correct knowledge and understanding is different than simple, reflexive cognition, it requires anuvyavasaya, anuvyavasaya cross-examination of cognition, reflective cognition of what one thinks one knows. An influential collection of texts on logic and reason is the Nyayasutras, attributed to Aksapada Gautama, variously estimated to have been composed between 6th century BCE and 2nd century CE. Naya school shares some of its methodology and human suffering foundations with Buddhism. However, a key difference between the two is that Buddhism believes that there is neither a soul nor self. Naya school, like other schools of Hinduism, believes that there is a soul and self, with liberation moksha, as a state of removal of ignorance, wrong knowledge, the gain of correct knowledge and unimpeded continuation of self. Etymology Naya, Naya is a Sanskrit word which means method, rule, specially a collection of general or universal rules. In some contexts, it means model, axiom, plan, legal proceeding, judicial sentence, or judgment. In the theory of logic, and Indian texts discussing it, the term also refers to an argument consisting of an enthymeme or sometimes for any syllogism. In philosophical context, Naya encompasses propriety, logic, and method. Naya is related to several other concepts and words used in Indian philosophies: hechu vidya, science of causes; anviksiki, science of inquiry; systematic philosophy; pramana sastra, epistemology, science of correct knowledge; tattva sastra, science of categories; tarka vidya, science of reasoning; innovation, synthesis; vidartha, science of discussion; and fakika sastra, science of uncovering sophism, fraud error, finding fakes. Some of these subsume or deploy the tools of Naya. Overview The historical development of Naya school is unclear, although Nasadiya hymns of Book 10 Chapter 129 of Rigveda recite its spiritual questions in logical propositions. In early centuries BCE, states Cluny, the early Naya scholars began compiling the science of rational, coherent inquiry and pursuit of knowledge. By 2nd century CE, Aksapada Gautama had composed Nyayasutras, a foundational text for Naya school, that primarily discusses logic, methodology and epistemology. The Naya scholars that followed refined it, expanded it, and applied it to spiritual questions. While the early Naya scholars published little to no analysis on whether supernatural power or God exists, they did apply their insights into reason and reliable means to knowledge to the questions of nature of existence, spirituality, happiness and moksha. Later Naya scholars, such as Adhyana, examined various arguments on theism and attempted to prove existence of God. Other Naya scholars offered arguments to disprove the existence of God. The most important contribution made by the Naya school to Hindu thought has been its treatises on epistemology and system of logic that, subsequently, has been adopted by the majority of the other Indian schools. Topic: <laughs> 16 Patarthas or categories. The Naya metaphysics recognizes 16 patarthas or categories and includes all six or seven categories of the Vaisheshika in the second one of them, called Pramaya. 
These 16 categories are pramana valid means of knowledge, pramaya objects of valid knowledge, samsaya doubt, prayana aim, dristanta example, siddhanta conclusion, avayava members of syllogism, tarka hypothetical reasoning, nirnaya settlement, vada discussion, jalpa wrangling, vatanda cavilling, hetvabasa fallacy, chala quibbling, jati sophisticated refutation and nigrahasthana point of defeat. Epistemology The Naya school of Hinduism developed and refined many treatises on epistemology that widely influenced other schools of Hinduism. Naya treated it as theory of knowledge, and its scholars developed it as pramana sastras. Pramana, a Sanskrit word, literally is, "...means of knowledge." It encompasses one or more reliable and valid means by which human beings gain accurate, true knowledge. The focus of pramana is how correct knowledge can be acquired, how one knows, how one doesn't, and to what extent knowledge pertinent about someone or something can be acquired. The Nayayikas the Naya scholars accepted four valid means pramana of obtaining valid knowledge: pramana, perception, prachaksa, inference, anumana, comparison, upamana, and word testimony of reliable sources. Sabda. The Naya scholars, along with those from other schools of Hinduism, also developed a theory of error, to methodically establish means to identify errors and the process by which errors are made in human pursuit of knowledge. These include samsaya, samasya problems, inconsistencies, doubts and viparyaya, viparyaya contrariness, errors which can be corrected or resolved by a systematic process of tarka, tarka reasoning, technique. Topic. Pratyaksha aka perception Pratyaksha perception, occupies the foremost position in the Naya epistemology. Perception can be of two types, laukika ordinary and alaukika extraordinary. Ordinary perception is defined by Aksapada Gautama in his Naya Sutra I, I. 4 as a non-erroneous cognition which is produced by the intercourse of sense organs with the objects. Indian texts identify four requirements for correct perception: Indriyarthasanikarsa, direct experience by one's sensory organs with the object, whatever is being studied; Avyapadesya, non-verbal, correct perception is not through hearsay. According to ancient Indian scholars, where one's sensory organ relies on accepting or rejecting someone else's perception, Avyabhakara does not wander; correct perception does not change, nor is it the result of deception because one's sensory organ or means of observation is drifting, defective. Suspect and vyavasayatmaka definite, correct perception excludes judgments of doubt, either because of one's failure to observe all the details, or because one is mixing inference with observation and observing what one wants to observe, or not observing what one does not want to observe. Ordinary perception to Naya scholars was based on direct experience of reality by eyes, ears, nose, touch, and taste. Extraordinary perception included yoga or pratibha intuition, samanyalakshanapratyaksa a form of induction from perceived specifics to a universal, and nyanalakshanapratyaksa a form of perception of prior processes and previous states of a topic of study by observing its current state. Topic. Determinate and indeterminate perception The Nayayayika maintains two modes or stages in perception. The first is called nirvikalpa indeterminate, when one just perceives an object without being able to know its features, and the second savikalpa determinate, when one is able to clearly know an object. All laukika and alaukika pratyakshas are savikalpa, but it is necessarily preceded by an earlier stage when it is indeterminate. Vatsayana says that if an object is perceived with its name we have determinate perception but if it is perceived without a name, we have indeterminate perception. Jayanta Bhatta says that indeterminate perception apprehends substance, qualities and actions and universals as separate and indistinct something and also it does not have any association with name, while determinate perception apprehends all these together with a name. There is yet another stage called pratyabhijña, when one is able to re-recognize something on the basis of memory. <laughs> Anumana aka inference Anumana inference is one of the most important contributions of the Naya. It can be of two types, inference for oneself svarthanumana, where one does not need any formal procedure, and at the most the last three of their five steps, and inference for others parathanumana, which requires a systematic methodology of five steps. 
Inference can also be classified into three types: pervavat, inferring an unperceived effect from a perceived cause; sheshavat, inferring an unperceived cause from a perceived effect; and samanyatodrishta, when inference is not based on causation but on uniformity of coexistence. A detailed analysis of error is also given, explaining when anumana could be false. Topic: Theory of inference. The methodology of inference involves a combination of induction and deduction by moving from particular to particular via generality. It has five steps, as in the example shown. There is fire on the hill called pradijna, required to be proved because there is smoke there called hichu, reason. Wherever there is smoke, there is fire, e.g. in a kitchen called udaharana, example of vyapti. The hill has smoke that is pervaded by fire called upanaya, reaffirmation or application. Therefore, there is fire on the hill called nigamana, conclusion. In Naya terminology for this example, the hill would be called as paksha minor term, the fire is called as sadhya major term, the smoke is called as hichu, and the relationship between the smoke and the fire is called as vyapti middle term. Hichu further has five characteristics, 1 it must be present in the paksha, 2 it must be present in all positive instances, 3 it must be absent in all negative instances, 4 it must not incompatible with the minor term or paksha and 5 all other contradictions by other means of knowledge should be absent. The fallacies in anumana may occur due to the following Asada, it is the unproved hichu that results in this fallacy. Paksadharmada Ashrayasada, if paksha minor term itself is unreal, then there cannot be locus of the hichu. E.g. The sky lotus is fragrant, because it is a lotus like any other lotus. Svarapasada, hichu cannot exist in paksa at all. E.g. sound is a quality, because it is visible. Vyapyatvasada, conditional hichu. Backquote wherever there is fire, there is smoke. The presence of smoke is due to wet fuel. Savyabhachara, this is the fallacy of irregular hichu. Sadarana, the hichu is too wide. It is present in both sapaksa and vipaksa. Backquote the hill has fire because it is knowable. Asadarana, the hichu is too narrow. It is only present in the paksha, it is not present in the sapaksa and in the vipaksha. Backquote sound is eternal because it is audible. Anupasamhari, here the hichu is non-exclusive. The hichu is all-inclusive and leaves nothing by way of sapaksha or vipaksha. E.g., all things are non-ternal, because they are knowable. Satpratipaksa, here the hichu is contradicted by another hichu. If both have equal force, then nothing follows. Sound is eternal, because it is audible, and sound is non-eternal, because it is produced. Here, audible is counterbalanced by produced and both are of equal force. Bodhita, when another proof as by perception definitely contradicts and disproves the middle term hichu, fire is cold because it is a substance. Varuda, instead of proving something it is proving the opposite. Sound is eternal because it is produced. Upamana aka comparison, analogy Upamana, upamana means comparison and analogy. Upamana, states Lochtefeld, may be explained with the example of a traveler who has never visited lands or islands with endemic population of wildlife. He or she is told, by someone who has been there, that in those lands you see an animal that sort of looks like a cow, grazes like cow but is different from a cow in such and such way. Such use of analogy and comparison is, state the Indian epistemologists, a valid means of conditional knowledge, as it helps the traveler identify the new animal later. The subject of comparison is formally called upamayam, the object of comparison is called upamanam, while the attributes are identified as samanya. Thus, explains Monier Williams, if a boy says, Her face is like the moon in charmingness. Her face is upamayam, the moon is upamanam, and charmingness is samanya. The 7th century text Bhattakavya in verses 10.28 through 10.63 discusses many types of comparisons and analogies, identifying when this epistemic method is more useful and reliable, and when it is not. In various ancient and medieval texts of Hinduism, 32 types of upamana and their value in epistemology are debated. Topic. Sabda aka word, testimony 
Sabda, sabda means relying on word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. Haryana explains sabda pramana as a concept which means testimony of a reliable and trustworthy person The schools of Hinduism which consider it epistemically valid suggest that a human being needs to know numerous facts, and with the limited time and energy available, he can learn only a fraction of those facts and truths directly. He must rely on others, his parent, family, friends, teachers, ancestors and kindred members of society to rapidly acquire and share knowledge and thereby enrich each other's lives. This means of gaining proper knowledge is either spoken or written, but through sabda words. The reliability of the source is important, and legitimate knowledge can only come from the sabda of reliable sources. The disagreement between the schools of Hinduism has been on how to establish reliability. Some schools, such as Karvaka, state that this is never possible, and therefore sabda is not a proper pramana. Other schools debate means to establish reliability. Testimony can be of two types, Vedika Vedic, which are the words of the four sacred Vedas, and Laukika, or words and writings of trustworthy human beings. Vedika testimony is preferred over Laukika testimony. Laukika sourced knowledge must be questioned and revised as more trustworthy knowledge becomes available. Topic. Comparison with other schools of Hinduism Each school of Hinduism has its own treatises on epistemology, with different number of pramanas. For example, compared to Naya school's four pramanas, Karvaka school has just one perception, while Advaita Vedanta school recognizes six means to reliable knowledge. Topic. The Naya theory of causation A cause is defined as an unconditional and invariable antecedent of an effect and an effect as an unconditional and invariable consequent of a cause. The same cause produces the same effect, and the same effect is produced by the same cause. The cause is not present in any hidden form whatsoever in its effect. The following conditions should be met. The cause must be antecedent Invariability Unconditionality Ananyathasiddha Naya recognizes five kinds of accidental antecedents Anyathasiddha. Mere accidental antecedent. E.g., the color of the potter's cloth. Remote cause is not a cause because it is not unconditional. E.g., the father of the potter. The co-effects of a cause are not causally related. Eternal substances, or eternal conditions are not unconditional antecedents, e.g. space. Unnecessary things, e.g. the donkey of the potter, Naya recognizes three kinds of cause. Samavayi, material cause, e.g. thread of a cloth. Asamavayi, color of the thread which gives the color of the cloth. Nimitta, efficient cause, e.g. the weaver of the cloth. Enyathakyadivada of Naya The Naya theory of error is similar to that of Kumarila's Viparita Kyati. The Nayayayikas also believe, like Kumarila, that error is due to a wrong synthesis of the presented and the represented objects. The represented object is confused with the presented one. The word anyatha means elsewise and elsewhere, and both these meanings are brought out in error. The presented object is perceived elsewise and the represented object exists elsewhere. They further maintain that knowledge is not intrinsically valid but becomes so on account of extraneous conditions pramana during both validity and invalidity. Topic. Naya on God and salvation Early Nayayayikas wrote very little about Ishvara literally, the supreme soul. Evidence available so far suggests that early Naya scholars were non-theistic or atheists. Later, and over time, Naya scholars tried to apply some of their epistemological insights and methodology to the question, does God exist? Some offered arguments against and some in favor. Topic. Arguments that God does not exist In Nyayasutra's Book 4, Chapter 1, verses 19-21, postulates God exists, states a consequence, then presents contrary evidence, and from contradiction concludes that the postulate must be invalid. The Lord is the cause, since we see that human action lacks results. 
This is not so since, as a matter of fact, no result is accomplished without human action. Since this is efficacious, the reason lacks force. A literal interpretation of the three verses suggests that Naya school rejected the need for a god for the efficacy of human activity. Since human action and results do not require assumption or need of the existence of God, Sutra IV.1.21 is seen as a criticism of the existence of God and theism postulate. The context of the above verses includes various efficient causes. Nyaya Sutra verses IV.1.22 to IV.1.24, for example, examine the hypothesis that random chance explains the world, after these Indian scholars had rejected God as the efficient cause. Topic. Arguments that God exists Udayana's Nyayakusumanjali gave the following nine arguments to prove the existence of creative God. Karyat lit. From effect. The world is an effect, all effects have efficient cause, hence the world must have an efficient cause. That efficient cause is God. Aoyanat lit. From combination, atoms are inactive. To form a substance, they must combine. To combine, they must move. Nothing moves without intelligence and source of motion. Since we perceive substance, some intelligent source must have moved the inactive atoms. That intelligent source is God. Dirtiade lit. From support, something sustains this world. Something destroys this world. Unintelligent adrsta unseen principles of nature cannot do this. We must infer that something intelligent is behind. That is God. Padit lit. From word, each word has meaning and represents an object. This representational power of words has a cause. That cause is God. Pratyayata lit. From faith, Vedas are infallible. Human beings are fallible. Infallible Vedas cannot have been authored by fallible human beings. Someone authored the infallible Vedas. That author is God. Shrute lit. From scriptures, the infallible Vedas testify to the existence of God. Thus God exists. Vakya lit. From precepts, Vedas deal with moral laws, the rights and the wrongs. These are divine. Divine injunctions and prohibitions can only come from a divine creator of laws. That divine creator is God. Samkhyavizazat lit. From the specialty of numbers, by rules of perception, only number. One. Can ever be directly perceived. All other numbers other than one, air inferences and concepts created by consciousness. When man is born, his mind is incapable of inferences and concepts. He develops consciousness as he develops. The consciousness development is self-evident and proven because of man's ability with perfect numerical conception. This ability to conceive numerically perfect concepts must depend on something. That something is divine consciousness. So God must exist. Adderstat lit. From the unforeseen, everybody reaps the fruits of his own actions. Merits and demerits accrue from his own actions. An unseen power keeps a balance sheet of the merit and demerit. But since this unseen power is unintelligent, it needs intelligent guidance to work. That intelligent guide is God. Topic. Liberation The Nayayayikas believe that the bondage of the world is due to false knowledge, which can be removed by constantly thinking of its opposite namely, the true knowledge. So the opening aphorism of the Naya Sutra states that only the true knowledge lead to Nisrayasa liberation. But the Naya school also maintains that the God's grace is essential for obtaining true knowledge. Jayanta, in his Nyayamanjari describes salvation as a passive stage of self in its natural purity, unassociated with pleasure, pain, knowledge and willingness. <laughs> <laughs> Literature of Naya The earliest text of the Naya school is the Naya Sutra of Aksapada Gautama. The text is divided into five books, each having two sections. Vatsayana's Naya Basya is a classic commentary on the Naya Sutra. Yudhiyotakara's Naya Vartika is written to defend Vatsayana against the attacks made by Dignaga. Vikaspati Misra's Nyayavartikatatpariyataka is the next major exposition of this school. Two other texts, Nyayasusinabanda and Nyayasutradhara are also attributed to him. Udayana's 984 CE Nyatatparyaparasuddhi is an important commentary on Vikaspati's treatise. 
His Nyayakusumanali is the first systematic account of theistic Nyaya. His other works include Atmatatvavivaka, Kiranavali and Nyayaparizista. Jayanta Bhatta's Nyayamanjari is basically an independent work. Basavarajna's Nyayasara 10th century CE is a survey of Naya philosophy. The later works on Naya accepted the Vicesika categories and Viradaraja's Tarkikaraksa 12th century CE is a notable treatise of this syncretist school. Kesava Misra's Tarkabasa 13th century CE is another important work of this school. Gangesa Upadhyaya's Tattvasintamani 12th century CE is the first major treatise of the new school of Navya Naya. His son, Vardhamana Upadhyaya's Nyayanibandaprakasa though a commentary on Udayana's Nyayatatparyaparasuti, incorporated his father's views. Jayadeva wrote a commentary on Tattvasintamani known as Aloka 13th century CE. Vasudeva Sarvabhauma's Tattvasintamanivyakya is first great work of Navadvipa school of Navyanaya. Raghunatha Siramani's Tattvasintamanadidhiti and Padarthakandana are the next important works of this school. Visvanatha's Nyayasutravarti is also a notable work. The commentaries on Tattvasintamanadidhiti by Jagadish Tarkalankar and Gadidhar Bhattacharya are the last two notable works of this school. Anambada tried to develop a consistent system by combining the ancient and the new schools, Prachina Naya and Navya Naya and Vicesika to develop the Naya Vicesika school. His Tarkasamgraha and Dipika are the popular manuals of this school. Topic see also topic References topic Further reading Karl Potter, Indian Metaphysics and Epistemology, The Tradition of Naya Vicesika up to Gangesa, Princeton University Press, OCLC 3,933,891 Stephen Phillips, Epistemology in Classical India, The Knowledge Sources of the Naya School, Routledge, ISBN 978-0415895545, OCLC 701 15,636 Arthur Keith, Indian Logic and Atomism, An Exposition of the Naya and Vayesika Systems, Greenwood Press, OCLC 451,428 Bimal Matilal A History of Indian Literature, Naya Vicesika, Otto Harisovitz Verlag, ISBN 978-344701807-4, OCLC 489575500 150 Gopi Kavaraj 1961, Gleanings from the History and Bibliography of the Naya Vicesika Literature, Indian Studies, Past and Present, OCLC 24469380 K. Chakrabarti Definition and Induction, A Historical and Comparative Study, University of Hawaii Press, ISBN 9780585309789 OCLC 45728618 Gangesa translator, Chakrabarti, Classical Indian Philosophy of Induction, The Naya Viewpoint, ISBN 9780739147500 OCLC 665834163 Navya Naya School Bimal Matilal, The Navya Naya Doctrine of Negation, The Semantics and Ontology of Negative Statements, Harvard University Press, OCLC 606911358 Daniel H. H. Ingalls, Materials for the Study of Navya Naya Logic, Harvard University Press, OCLC 1907221 External links Epistemology in Classical Indian Philosophy Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Stanford University Navya Naya Philosophy Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Stanford University Lectures on Naya The Oxford Center for Hindu Studies, Oxford University Naya. Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy